Barnaby Jones, a Quinn Martin production, starring Buddy Ebsen, also starring Lee Merriweather, Mark Shera, with guest stars Sandra Kearns, Dawson Mays, John O'Connell. Tonight's episode, Dance with Death. couples in the world, right? Okay, now, Saturday night's gonna be our biggie, okay? We're gonna crown one of these three semi-finalists, the king and queen of the discos. So we're all gonna be here for the action, right? We're gonna be here? Okay, so let's dance! Listen to that, Penny, that speaker. That sounds fine to me. All right, now the whole system needs rebuilding. Hey, did I tell you this was going to give me the job? Got this great new testing equipment. Woo! Sounds fantastic. Frank. Hello, hot stuff. Hey, look, Frank, you know, I, I, I didn't mean for that cop to arrest you. Well, what'd you think he was going to do? Keep score? I know there's a name for broads like you. Some day, baby. Some sweet day. So what am I going to call you? Oh, hi. I'm uh, Penny Tremaine. Russ Hart. You're some kind of dancer, Penny. <laughs> you noticed. And you noticed I noticed. Yeah. So let's go, huh? Let's go. Yeah, go. To your place, huh? Unless you've got a better idea. <laughs> wow, just like that. Hi, I'm Rust Hart. Let's go to my place. Have a bite. Stay all night. <laughs> hey, baby. It was your invitation. Out there on the dance floor. Solid gold. Engraved. Oh, sure. Look, I noticed you. I thought, gee, that's a neat-looking guy. I'd like to get to know him better. But <laughs> you're a little too swift for me. For you? The chick with your moves? Please don't do that. You want to get to know me? Take your hands off me. Hey, cool Let's it, Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Okay, buddy, okay. They got a place for this kind of thing, and this ain't it. Hey, man, that chick's crazy. And you're leaving. Hey, wait a minute. I mean, she was asking find, for it. You can't find the door. We'll be glad to toss you in that direction. Wait a minute. Hey, welcome to the club, sucker. I am! <laughs> <laughs> Gary, I want to dance. Huh? Gary, I want to dance. Okay, babe, take it easy. Come in. 
Felicia, you just scared the hell out of me. I'm sorry. I tried to call you earlier, but you'd already left. And I didn't feel like the disco tonight. Well, I should have known. I mean, you're the only one that has a key to the apartment. It's just... It's just me. I had a hassle tonight. I take it you had one, too. Otherwise, why would you come running home to Mother, huh? It was the last time. How'd you like your old roommate back again? Sure, sure. How many times have I heard that? Oh, no, I mean it. I'm gonna divorce Carl. Well, you've never said that before. Uh, look, hon, uh, can we talk about this in the morning? I've got to make amends for what I put my poor bod through tonight. Okay, soak it. <laughs> I'm a little bit drained myself tonight. was trying to kill me. Are you saying that Felicia Norris was killed by mistake? Yes. It's all my fault. How can you be so sure of that? Because nobody knew she was at my apartment in my bedroom. Well, couldn't somebody have followed her there? Well, then why did they wait till I got home? I mean, she was there all evening alone. Good point. But, uh, Miss Tremaine, this is really a matter for the police. Well, I talked to the police, and uh, I'm afraid they didn't take me very seriously. That's why I came to you, Mr. Jones. I'm scared. Uh, excuse me for interrupting, Barnaby, but you're running out of time. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, but uh, I have to testify in court. Perhaps uh, Jedediah can look into your case. You got it. Oh, thank you. Typed up your lab notes. Thank you. Uh, Barnaby, what about your jacket? What about it? Well, you said you wanted to wear something conservative. There was a stuffy jury. That yeah, I uh, tried that suit on, but it looked like I was going to a bar mitzvah. So, uh, anyway, what I'm wearing, I won't change what I tell them. I think maybe I'd better call Lieutenant Biddle. Oh, uh, Lieutenant Biddle is the one who didn't believe me, and I'm afraid if you talk to him, you won't believe me either. Well, now, look, you came to us for help, and you're going to get help, right? Right. 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 <laughs> Uh, now, I want to talk to you about why you think somebody might be trying to harm you, who you think it could be, that sort of thing, and then I'll run down to police headquarters and take advantage of everything they've learned. And, uh, we can just go from there. Yeah, sure, I talked to Penny Tremaine. I think she's got a very vivid imagination. You mean she's paranoid? Well, she's got a right to get jumpy being that close to a murder, but she got some weird idea that every guy she brushes off would like to kill her. She might just be placing a little too much importance on what she has to offer. Well, she called the police on one guy that was uh, getting physical with her. Turns out he was carrying a little more grass than the law allows, so the police busted him for that. That's Frank Wilcox. He's out on bail. Penny claims that he virtually threatened her at the disco that night. Yeah, we checked him out. But he's got some chick who will swear he was with her until sunrise. Of course, that's probably not worth the ink it would take to write it up. 
What about the guy she got bounced that same night, Russ Hart? Charlie, a motive for murder, JR. Yeah, but some guys can get pretty kinky, Lieutenant. Why don't you come with me? I'll show you what a real suspect looks like. The victim's husband, Carl Norris. They just brought him in. Mr. Norris, I'm going to try to save us both a lot of time by telling you that we have witnesses to the fight you had with your wife on the afternoon of the day of her murder and to the threats you made. I'd like to kill you. You were quoted as having said. Just words. It was a family argument, nothing more. I've just got nosy neighbors. It was none of their business. When threats like that get carried out, it becomes our business, Mr. Norris. I did not kill Felicia, and I can save you a lot of time, Sergeant. Lieutenant. Whatever. According to what I hear, my wife was killed a little after midnight, right? That's right. Well, I was on the Ventura Freeway at the time. I was driving my father-in-law back to L.A. from Santa Barbara. We didn't arrive home until nearly 1 o'clock. I told your men that when they picked me up. Well, unfortunately, we can't check that out, Mr. Norris, because Mr. Raymond is still in a coma, but I'm sure you knew that. Coma? When we told Mr. Raymond of his daughter's death, he collapsed. Heart attack. He's had these attacks before. He's always recovered. You work for your father-in-law, don't you? Yes. I'm general manager of the Raymond Carpet Manufacturing Company. Now, you've had fights with your wife before. Who hasn't? And each time, she would go and stay with Penny Tremaine for a while. They used to be roommates. So it wouldn't really be very difficult for you to guess where she might have gone this time. <laughs> Lieutenant, did it ever occur to you that my wife was not the intended victim? Are you suggesting that somebody meant to kill Penny? It was her apartment. Penny works for you, doesn't she? She's my secretary. Do you have any idea why somebody might want to kill her? Not exactly, but I wouldn't be surprised. Well, for one thing, that disco where she hangs out, she meets a lot of weirdos there. The hospital just called. Mr. Raymond is conscious. Now we can check out that story of yours, Mr. Norris. Lieutenant, I hear you have a suspect in that Norris woman's murder. Well, who told you fellas that? Oh, don't con us, Lieutenant. It's Carl Norris, isn't it? The victim's husband. Has he been officially charged yet? All right, for the record, we're talking to a number of people. At this time, nobody is under arrest. You got that? Can't you do better than that? Talk to me later. Mr. Raymond, I'm sorry to bother you at a time like this, but uh, just a couple of questions. You returned to Los Angeles last night from your beach house in Santa Barbara. Do you remember what time you got home? Late. Very late. Had guy trouble. Was it before midnight or after? More like one. Did you make the drive alone? Oh, no. I don't drive anymore. My health. Who was with you, Mr. Raymond? Who drove the car? Carl. Carl Norris, your, your son-in-law? Uh, yes. He's so good about it. He loved Felicia so much. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Raymond. Hi, I'm looking for Penny Tremaine. Is she here yet? Out there. I never had a client who could dance like that before. JR, hi. Hi, you know, you didn't look like a girl who was afraid somebody was going to kill her out there. Look, home is for worrying. Out there, there's no space for bad thoughts. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you. Good luck. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, that's the second time in about two minutes I've heard that. Would you please explain it? I was afraid you wouldn't ask. Look, why don't you just bug off? No way. There's a law against what you do, baby. Russ Hart's law. And I'm going public with it. I want to see your kind become a seriously endangered species. Well, what do you want to do, get bounced out of here again? Is that what you want? Not this time. No hands, see? 
Uh, I want to date. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to hear all of this. You're wasting your time, friend. You're with none other than Miss Tease of the 20th century. I mean, what you see ain't what you get. Come on, JR, let's dance. Hey, look, we, we really can't talk out here. Isn't there something? Never mind. Guys just expect more of me than I'm willing to give, and uh, some of them get pretty upset about it. Yeah, but enough to want to kill you? Right there where you're standing, there used to be a small wooden chair. Frank Wilcox smashed it. I had to call the cops. Penny, is it true what Russ Hart said? Well, yeah, I guess so. I, it, but I really don't mean it to be that way, honest. I. I really would like to find a nice guy sometime, and I want him to hold me, and I want to love him. But something happens, and they just turn me off. Well, maybe you just haven't found the right one. It's a little late. Hello? next, he said? And he said Felicia's death was a mistake. I couldn't really get a fix on his voice, though. Oh, I knew it. I knew they were after me. And you don't have any leads? Yeah, there are some possibilities. I'll talk to a few of them, shake the tree a little. You know, I was thinking of your dancing partner, Gary Allen. Oh, no, not Gary. I mean, uh, we've never had any trouble. We're best friends. Well, I know, I know that, but you're together a lot. He knows a lot of the same people. He could have seen something, anything. You never know. Yeah, he works for a place called the Oakwood Stereo Systems on North Olympic. Well, he could be at the disco. During the daytime? They're updating the sound system, and he got the job. Terrific. I'll drop you at work first. Ooh, it's my first day at work. I think it's going to be kind of hard. I mean, it's Felicia's father's company, you know, and uh, she got me my job there. Everybody's going to be asking a lot of questions. Might be good for you. I mean to talk about it. Mm, let everything out in the open. Little occupational therapy. You know where I'll be. Penny, you didn't have to come back now. Well, if you can be here, so can I. Nurse? What are you doing here? We still bothering you about this? No, 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 not police. Private investigator, J.R. Jones. He's helping me, Carl. Oh, yes. You were interested in the premise that they were after Penny instead of my wife. Oh, Carl, I'm so sorry. Hey, 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 come on, none of that now. You better go plug in that coffee pot. You know what a bear I am before I get that first cup. I'll pick you up after work, OK? OK, I'll see you. Mr. Norris, you mentioned something about uh, the disco, something about weirdos. Oh, yeah, well, you know, some of the types you can see in a place like that. I was in there a few times myself. With your wife? Well, I, she was Penny's roommate. I just figured that... Well, you're right, of course, but uh, Felicia wasn't my wife then. When we did get married, I wouldn't let her go back there. I only wish I could convince Penny of the same thing, but uh, it's like a drug with her. That's too bad. I was kind of hoping you had. Well, you see, the kind of motivation we're talking about here in, in, in Penny's case is something recent, you know, spontaneous. 
On the other hand, if the killer hasn't made a mistake, well, I'm afraid we're talking about a whole other ballgame. Then you're not convinced that Penny was the actual target? Not really. I have to keep an open mind on a thing like this, Mr. Norris. Right up until the minute that the killer is signed, sealed, and delivered, you know. As long as you find him, Jones. As long as you find the one who killed my wife. It's about time they let me overhaul the system. Did you ever see such a relic? Penny tells me you're pretty good at this, and you're going to business for yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's my last job for Oakwood Stereo. You and Penny get along okay, huh? Oh, yeah, fantastic. Any romance? With Penny? <laughs> you kidding? That wouldn't last 10 minutes. Why not? Or a hang-up, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. It really gets her in a lot of trouble, doesn't it? Really? You've actually seen it happen? Yeah. Happened the night Felicia was killed. You mean the guy she got bounced, Russ Hart? Yeah, that guy's got him standing in line. I mean, he's not used to that kind of action. Then they get laughed at, too. Any others? A few dozen, maybe. <laughs> they come and go, you know. And you still hanging around here? Tank Bronson. That's funny, he's the same guy that bounced Russ Hart. You're talking about the big guy at the gate? Yeah, yeah. He almost got fired on account of Penny. I mean, she was asking for it, you know. It's the same as the other time. How long ago was that? Well, a couple of months. Oh, wow. Seems like an awfully long time to hold a grudge. Thank you, Gary. Sure, any time. Oh, by the way, uh, you knew Felicia when she used to come in here with Penny, didn't you? Yeah, sure. She's a nice lady. I can't see anybody wanting to hurt her. You're right. Thank you. Just calm down. Well, somebody's out there threatening to kill Penny, and nobody's doing anything about it. All right, all right. What did the voice sound like? Well, uh, I didn't actually hear it. But somebody else did uh, when he called the first time. It was that Jones guy. J.R. Jones? Right. He knows about this. You excuse me a minute. I was just about to call you. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I didn't know you were busy. Yes, I'm busy. Finding out you're withholding information. In a murder investigation, in case you've forgotten. Now, why didn't you let me know about that phone call to Penny Tremaine? I was going to. That's why I'm here. What does he have to do with it? She's got a second call in his office. Now, at least he let me know about it. She got another call. Where is Penny? At my office. You left her alone? There are over 100 people there. In your office? I'll see you later. You come back here, I'll, I'll talk call to you. Not too bad. Oh, I'm sorry, J.R. I just didn't feel like cooking tonight. Otherwise, I would have shown you how it ought to be done. Ah, oh, you're a good cook, huh? <laughs> have you ever known a country girl from Iowa that wasn't? Iowa? Got family back there? Oh, I guess so. I ran away when I was 17. Ah, uh, strict parents. <laughs> strict. Couldn't even breathe. I couldn't do what the other kids did. I didn't have any friends. I couldn't even go out on dates. JR. Mm hmm? Put your arms around me. What? Put your arms around me. Hold me. Please. Penny. You're trembling. Penny, what's wrong? What is it? It's a freak! That's what it is! Penny Tremaine, the freak! The tease! Oh! J.R., what's wrong with me? Why can't I break their hold on me? Penny, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> Whose hold are you talking about? Are you talking about your parents? My daddy and his Bible, sitting there in his big chair reading out loud to me every night while my mother just sat there nodding her head, agreeing with everything he said. And I know that he said what he wanted to say, and I know he read what he wanted to read. I know that. It's just very too deep. Loving is a sin, right? Oh, it, it 
It's dirty. It's filthy. And so are men, all of them. Just ask my mother. <sighs> when I was eight years old, a little neighbor boy kissed me on the cheek. My parents saw it. My father took an electric cord from a toaster, doubled it in his hand, and whipped me until I bled, while my mother held me. And that was just the beginning. Penny, that's over with. That's in the past. Now, look, you know the problem. That's half the battle. A little professional help. Oh. Now, take it easy. Now, take it easy. Now, maybe that's not him. Come on. Hello? Penny, maybe it'll be tonight. Maybe it'll be tomorrow night. All right, wise guy. If you want to listen to, go ahead. You're not going to save her. He's in the phone booth across the street. Keep him talking. Why are you doing this to me? Please. Who are you? dead, I ran to the window and looked out. I saw somebody running from the phone booth in JR chasing him, but I didn't recognize him. What about the car? I never saw a car. By the time I saw it, it was too dark to get a license number. Uh, please, can we wait till morning to finish this? Of course. I've got everything I need. If it'll make you feel any better, I'll leave an officer here with you. No, no, Lieutenant, I'm going to take her over to base. Fine, you'll be all right there. Okay. Come here, I want to show you something. Let me say that's pretty fancy shooting. I would. Yeah, we figure he was about 150 yards away. Mm, a rapid fire, too. I heard him. I think we're on the same wavelength, Jay. Are any marksman that can group him like that can pretty much hit anything he wants to hit. Mm-hmm. Or miss anything he wants to miss. Thank you, Lieutenant. Well, what are you trying to say? That he missed me on purpose? I mean, what did I do? Imagine those phone calls? Penny, look, don't you see the phone calls are part of it? The idea is to make the police think you're the target. So they're going to look for somebody in, in your background, not Felicia's. And from what I know of it, it's worked. Well, I just can't believe that anyone would want to hurt Felicia. Well, her husband has a motive, but he also has an alibi. Penny, let me ask you this. What did, uh, what did Felicia's dad feel about Carl? He liked him. I mean, he was gradually turning over control of the company to him. Yeah, but if Felicia actually divorced him, would Mr. Raymond still keep him on? No. Uh, he'd do what Felicia wanted. <sighs> Every time she and Carl had a fight, she told him she'd see to it uh, that he got fired. Do you have any idea what these fights were about? Yeah. You see, Carl had old-fashioned ideas. He wanted his wife to stay home all the time, and uh, he didn't like the clothes that she wore or the friends she had. Well, you see, Felicia was young. She wanted to have fun, go dancing, you know. Did Felicia ever get involved with anyone at the disco? Well, uh, there was Frank Wilcox. What do you mean, the guy who got arrested? Yeah, um, he tried to hit on her a couple of times, but she married Carl about then. What about the other times that Felicia would leave Carl and stay with you? Did she go to the disco then? Well, yeah, a few times. Any relationships developed? No, uh, Frank tried, but uh, she just wasn't interested in him. Hmm. 
You know, it's only 11.30. I think I'm going to run over to the disco and nose around a little bit. I'll see you later. Sure you do. Don't you remember I was in here the other night looking for Penny Tremaine? Ah. Uh, how did you make out? Nice girl. Nice girl. I'm looking for Frank Wilcox tonight. Not here. Hmm. Uh, did, did you know uh, Penny's friend, Felicia? The one that got knocked off at her place? Yeah, yeah. Can you tell me something about her? You mean snitch on her? Well, is there something to snitch about? Hey, don't get smart. I don't know what you're after, but... Look, I'm a private investigator. I'm looking into the murder of Felicia Norris. Now, I know all about your run-in with Penny, and I know that you're in a position to see a lot of things around here that nobody else does. Well, that doesn't mean I'm going to share them with you. Oh, well, with me or with the police, the choice is yours. You want to know about Frank and Felicia, is that it? For starters. Forget it. He never scored. Well, what about uh, Russ Hart? The guy you threw out here the night Felicia was murdered. He was a newcomer. He never knew Felicia. Came back a couple of times after the hassle with Penny, made a little noise about it, then took off with some chick. I haven't seen either one of them since. Oh, come on, Tank. You do better than that. Okay. Felicia had a thing going with Gary Allen. Penny's dancing partner. Oh, she never mentioned it. She didn't know it, but they were very cozy. When Penny wasn't looking, well, you know how hung up she is. And Felicia was married, so... Thank you, Penny. Gary, did you get it all finished? Yeah, I have to glue it back together every night so they can use it. It's gonna take a long time to make the switch over, I tell you. Yeah, listen, can I ask you something? Yeah, sure. It's kind of loud. Let's go over there. Uh, it's about Felicia. You knew she was cheating on her husband. Felicia? Hmm? No way. What do you mean, you didn't know? No, man, I know she's straight. <laughs> I mean, all she ever talked about was her husband, uh, even when they had a fight. Maybe you just didn't notice. She was always with Penny, and Penny was always with me. How could I not notice? You have a point there, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, who's this mystery lover supposed to be, anyway? I don't know. I thought maybe you could help me. <laughs> Oh, thanks. It's Gary. Hey, we gotta talk, man. Where can I meet you? What do you mean they aren't convinced? I eased by there after you shot the window out and the cops came and then I hung around. They are so convinced, they moved Penny out of her apartment. Yeah. Then why was Jones asking me questions about Felicia's lover a half hour ago? Nobody knew you said, not Penny, not anyone. Oh, man, I would have bet my life on it. Yeah, well, maybe you still are. Unless we can really convince them. I mean, so there is no more doubt. All right. Look, I'll, uh, I'll make a couple of more calls. Another incident. Oh, man. I don't know why I ever bought your proposition in the first place. Well, I know why. Because there isn't anything in this world you wouldn't do for money, that's why. Any guy who comes to me and says, hey, sucker, I'm making out with your wife, but I'll leave her alone for $5,000. Now, I know that's a creep who'll stoop to anything, particularly if I sweeten the pot to 20000 OK. So I got rid of your wife. And you paid me off. And that's it. Period. All right, Gary. OK? That's the way you feel about it? I mean, you've got all that nice new equipment now. And you'll be opening up your new store soon. The only trouble is, it's going to be kind of hard to run your business from death row. Death row. Yeah. Because when I fall, buddy, you fall. It's as simple as that. 
If they're checking out Felicia, they're pointing towards us. And there seems to be only one way we can head them off. Convince the police once and for all that Felicia's murder was a mistake. I mean, if Penny gets killed, who's going to argue that? Yeah, but you said they took her away. I mean, I don't even know where she is. I do. I tailed them. That is exactly what I wanted. To do. Thank you so what much. What did they do? Declare a mistrial? The defendant decided he'd be better off pleading second degree murder. So you won. The people won. And all without the benefit of the conservative suit the DA wants you to wear. That should please the moths. Uh, Barnaby, we've got something on the Norris case that I think you should know about. About the shooting. Betty filled me in on the telephone. I went back to the disco and talked to the bouncer there. He told me that uh, Felicia Norris was carrying on a secret affair with Gary Allen. Penny's dancing partner? Mm-hmm. Penny didn't even know about it. You talked to Allen? Mm-hmm, but I just told him that I heard about the affair, that uh, we didn't know who the guy was, and that maybe he could help us out. Well, you're getting to be downright sneaky, Jedediah. Well, I've had a couple of good teachers. Huh. From the look on your face, Mr. Allen probably said he didn't know anything about it. He insisted that such a thing was impossible. Well, it does give us uh, somebody to ask questions about, doesn't it? Such as uh, whether Gary Allen was in the Army? And the answer to that is yes. Oh. Where on the rival range he earned the grade of expert? Are you attempting to prove that I am not indispensable around here? You certainly covered all the bases. Well, except one. Uh, the second I left Allen last night, he ran for the nearest telephone. An accomplice in an affair of the heart? Just a couple of interesting possibilities, don't you think? You tell Lieutenant Biddle? Not quite. Uh, there's just one place I want to check out first. And I'm going to take an early lunch at the apartment with Penny. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, if you can handle things around here without us. Her name's Felicia Norris. Now, you sure you've never seen her around Gary Allen's apartment? No. Nah. I'd have remembered one that good looking. Of course, he might have sneaked her in at night, but I doubt it. How come? Well, he hardly had any visitors at all. What do you mean, he was a loner? Well, about the only people that ever knocked on his door were salesmen. That one carpet guy must have come by three or four times. I remember I told Gary, the management decides when it's time to replace the rug. Carpet guy? You sure that's what he was? Well, there was a sign on his car right on the door said such and such carpet company. Raymond Carpet Manufacturing Company. Geez, I don't know. Could have been. Hey, wait a minute. I thought you wanted to know about that girl. Not anymore. Thank you very much. Oh, River Darcy. Mmm. That was good. I'm sorry that I have to head back to the office so soon. I imagine being... <laughs> Cooped up here in the apartment all alone is not much fun for you. Well, I guess it's better than being shot at. True. You know where I'd like to be at the disco with Gary rehearsing for the contest tonight. Mm, it's a shame. I'm sorry that you have to miss that. Yeah. But I'll hurry back as soon as possible. And don't bother with the dishes, okay? I won't. <laughs> See you later. Uh-huh. What did you do? Forget the... Gary! Hey, babe. Well, how did you find me? Uh, your friend Jones stopped by the disco last night, and uh, he told me about that shooting and where you were, so I, uh, I decided I'd drop by and pick you up. We still got some brushing up to do, you know? You mean at the disco? Yeah, I got the key. <laughs> I'm working there, you remember? Well, I know, but I mean, after all that's happened, I... Yeah, especially after all that's happened. Come on, I know you, Penny. When things get heavy, there's only one place you want to be. On that dance floor. With the music wrapped all around you and, and the lights flashing so you can't see anything oh. except what you're doing. <laughs> now, you want to tell me I'm wrong? Oh, you know you're not wrong. Well, come on, you want to go win that contest or uh, you want to sit here and wish it you had? Uh, uh, let me call Betty's office. Hey, no, you're crazy. <laughs> I mean, they're only trying to talk you out of Cohen. Come on. Come on, Betty. 
Let's go. I'll get it, Barnaby. Barnaby Jones, investigations may help you. Betty, is Penny there with you? Oh, no, JR. She's still at my apartment. Well, that's where I am. She's gone. Did you find a note? Barney, there's nothing. I looked everywhere. Wait a minute. She said she was uh, unhappy about missing the rehearsal at the disco with uh, Gary Allen. Wait a minute. I just connected him with Norris. I'll meet you there, Jedediah. I'll call Lieutenant Biddle. I'm going to give Betty a ring, Gary. You got a dime? Nope. Oh, come on. I know you got a dime. You gotta earn it first. A diamond dance. Gary! I was afraid I couldn't count on you anymore. Carl! More work, Carl. I can't do it. You can't. I can. What is going on here? What is this all about? You, Penny. It's about you. Oh, my God, no. Oh. Sorry, Penny. It really wasn't supposed to come to this. Nobody was supposed to die but Felicia. Please come. Please. I have to protect myself, don't I? Nora, hold it! Give it up, Carl. Felicia on the way. Behind that speaker. All right, Barnaby, stay here. Don't get any closer. We gotta go and get him. I think he'll come to you. Just be ready for him. gets through with me, maybe it never will. Oh, still, it's a shame about the contest. All you need is a partner. Hey, it's a good idea. I, uh, wasn't referring to you, Jenna Diane.